Now the question actually arises is that how is Dialogflow finding that which is the right intent for your user query? We need to understand, right? I just said that it will find the right intent and according to that intent, it will give the answer. But how is it classifying? How is it actually finding out that this intent is the right intent according to the user query that has come up? And that is defined with the help of training phrases. So training phrases, what are training phrases? You open up dialog flow, you go to intents and you'll see something called training phrases. And what are these training phrases? Training phrases simply means that what are users gonna say to get that action done, to have that answer? What do they normally say in their lifestyle to get that answer? What do they say in a human language format? What do they say in a natural language format to get that one answer? What are the different questions? You have to put up all those different questions in training phrases one by one. So what are training phrases? Training phrases are keywords and phrases that match your user queries or messages. What are they gonna type actually? These phrases are just like how humans speak with each other. So these could be just normal sentences. You just need to enter them up there and you'll start seeing the magic of dialogue flow. What actually happens is when an end user expression, when a user message actually resembles one of these training phrases, dialogue flow matches that intent. So this is how Dialogflow is actually finding out which intents answer do I have to give. It is through training phrases. It matches the training phrases. If your training phrase resembles the user message, it is going to go for your training phrase. It will show that answer. Now one point I really feel that you need to remember here is that the user query is matched with training phrase, not with the name of intent. Your name of intent could be simply anything where it has got nothing to do with the matching part. It is not your keyword. It is not that training phrase which the user message is being matched up to. So your intent name has got nothing to do with the matching of user message. All the matching that is done, that is done through training phrases. All the matching that is done, user queries are only matched with training phrases, not with intent names. Now let's take the example of a university chatbot, a university assistant. So let's say a student comes up to a university assistant and needs to see all the courses that they provide. Now what could the student say to the chatbot? The student could say, show me all courses. Just simply all courses. What courses do you have? Program list. Tell me about your courses. Display courses. What programs do you offer? These are the set of questions that the student is gonna say to get information about courses. Now you can see that these sentences are a bit different. Somewhere it is saying, show me all courses. Somewhere it is, what programs do you offer? But the intent is somewhere the same. The answer that the student is trying to get is somewhere the same. Hence, all these phrases will go into the segment of training phrases one by one. And since you can see that all these questions are trying to get that one single answer, this will particularly go into one single intent and all these questions will be added as training phrases. And we can name this intent as all courses because so that we get a reference that this is where I stored an answer for all courses. And that's it. So that we get a reference that the developer that you as a chatbot developer gets a reference that this is where I stored this answer. This is where I stored that answer. This is where I stored this answer. And for that, you need to put up names that actually match what the intent actually does. As simple as it sounds. Now, when we are defining training phrases, we don't have to, you know, put in every effort. As in the last example, if I say, show me courses, show me all courses, show courses, I could just have said one of these. I don't need to say all of these because Dialogflow is an NLP engine. It recognizes patterns, it recognizes queries, it recognizes keywords and that is what it does. And it synthesizes the training phrases to match your query. So you don't need to put in all small, small training phrases. What you need to do is you need to put in around 8 to 12 different training phrases. So it's around, you create around 10 different training phrases just as in this example that where the intent name is learn data science. And now how could a user ask that they want to learn data science. They could say how to start. They could say steps to learn data science. They could say where to start learning from. They could say become a data scientist. They could say how to learn data science. 
learn data science start learning data science a lot of these you might see are similar but a lot of these are really different and that is what we need to do we, do, we don't need to define very much same phrases too often we need to define different kind of phrases which try to have the same action actually so that's it i hope you're getting what i'm trying to say do you don't need to make those small small changes those small small efforts exactly match something dialog flow is a good enough nlp engine to do that on its own moving ahead let's once again have a look at the query workflow now what's actually happening out here for the weather forecast example it says suppose you have three different training phrases one of them is what is the forecast another is what is the weather like right now or one is what's the temperature going to be tomorrow in seattle now what is your dialogue flow agent gonna do it is gonna find a suitable intent and we can see that all these questions are again trying to ask the same thing and when they ask the same thing hopefully all these training phrases are in just one single intent so if i am asking any of these three queries it's going to take me to the answer of that one single intent where these three training phrases lie so as you can see here assistant finds a suitable intent single intent triggers for each question and then assistant responds to the query so it extracts the time it extracts the location and then gives you the weather forecast and that is how we go through we'll be learning how you can also extract the time how you can extract the location and how you can extract these different things to give better answers to give scalable answers but for now these are very static answers and you know basic chatbots have static answers simple answers and that is how we do it right now now let's come to the very first intent that you see when you create a dialog flow agent and it's called default welcome intent what is default welcome intent now default welcome intent is basically the start of a conversation when we start a conversation what do we say we say hi hello hey uh, how are you doing and all that stuff howdy here hey there we say quick things we just bid a hi basically and so in this intent the training phrases are in this format they are already there they are pre made by dialog flow itself you just go in there and you'll see all these training phrases up there and you can answer whatever you want to start the conversation with so now what what happens here is this first welcome intent can be triggered in two manners the first one is by saying any of these training phrases the another manner is by invoking the welcome event Now, what is an event? We we'll covering this in the further lectures. But to give you a gist, an event is something where you won't require a training phrase to trigger an intent. For suppose, event is start of a conversation. Now, when I'm starting this conversation, I need not necessarily say hi, but I need to have something from the assistant where it starts the conversation. So, in sense, an event is provoked called welcome, where now the first message is coming from the bot itself. it is not going going in from my side and that is how you can invoke the default welcome intent the another intent that you have already have there is default fallback intent so your default fallback intent is triggered when the user query doesn't match any of the other intents so suppose you have around you know 40 to 50 intents that are matched according to their actions but the user says something that is not matching any of the training phrases in any of the other intents so now what will happen is the answer from default fallback intent will be triggered if your default fallback intent is switched on as you can see there is a switch button on the top also and dialog flow gives you some options you know predefined so dialog flow has already put on up some of the answers that are triggered when a default fallback intent is triggered actually and these answers as you can see are you know something like i didn't get that can you say it again i missed what you said what was that sorry could you say that again something like which actually tells the user that the bot was not able to understand the user expression so this is very simple the default fallback intent is matched when your agent doesn't recognize an end user expression so now you can define basically you can have some funky some casual some very good some professional type of fallback answers so that the user doesn't feel too bad about their bot not answering that thing so yes these are two basic intents that you get with your dialog flow assistant and then onwards you go and create your own intents the next is follow up intents now let's consider a hall of intents suppose 
there were 50 intents in one hall. And now when I'm calling out some training phrase, one intent is particularly triggered. I'm calling out some training phrase, one intent comes up. I'm calling out another training phrase, another intent comes up. But now what I do is basically inside that hall, I put five intents inside a cabin. And now these five intents are logged in. And now this cabin has a gatekeeper that is one intent. So now 44 intents are roaming around freely. One intent is gatekeeping five intents and those five intents are in shelter of this one intent. If you can access this one intent, you can access these five intents. So hopefully, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. There are some intents that we need to invoke after we invoke some particular intent. For suppose, you're going to buy groceries. So now suppose you have an intent on products. So I say that I want this jam, what is the pricing? And now, once this intent is provoked, the answer comes up is, for sure, which size would you want? So now, a follow-up intent is only matched when the parent intent is matched in the previous conversation turn. Now to access a follow-up intent, I need to first trigger a parent intent. Only then I can access a follow-up intent. That's the rule out there. You can also create multiple levels of nested follow-up intent. Now what does that mean is that one follow-up intent can again have another follow-up intent and then that follow-up intent can also have another follow-up intent. In that manner, things become nested and things reside one into another. Again, nothing is matched with the intent name. Everything is being matched with a training phrase. So suppose if I say first the training phrase of a parent intent, I'll get an answer. And now after this, if I say the training phrase of the follow-up intent, only then I'll get the answer of a follow-up intent. Also, I mean to say is, there is a training phrase to follow up intent and if I directly come to the assistant and say the training phrase that is in the follow up intent, I won't get an answer. And that is quite simple because I had to invoke the parent intent. So again, the step is very simple. I first invoke a parent intent and then I have access to invoke the follow up intent as I say the training phrase. Let's take this example of follow-up intent and parent intents. So Dialogflow provides you many pre-made follow-up intents also. Suppose there is a follow-up intent on yes, no, cancel and all that. Because if I just jump onto an assistant and say yes, I would like to have an answer something like your order is done. Obviously, I need to choose something first and then it has to ask me that would you like to go ahead with this order? Then it will come a yes and a no out there and then I click on a yes which is a part of a follow-up intent and then it will say your order is done and that is the right manner that is the right way i hope you're getting now what are follow-up intents so let's suppose for this example while booking an appointment with an hairstylist the intent name was appointment the training phase was hello now you can see very clearly that the intent name just specifies that what is this intent trying to do that, that intent is trying to book an appointment it is a start of booking an appointment, but the training phrase is just hello. And that's completely fine because user expression is matched with training phrases, not with intent names. So now what happens here is the user comes up and says, hello, the intent response is, would you like to make an appointment? So now as the user sees, would you like to make an appointment? And if the user says a yes, appointment yes name intent is triggered. And the bot says, would you like a haircut? And now again, there are two follow-up intents, which is haircut yes, haircut no. If the user says a yes, the haircut yes intent name is triggered. The answer for it is your appointment is set. And this is what the user will see. If the user says no, the intent name for haircut no will be triggered. And the answer for it is goodbye. And if in this very starting, when the user was asked that, would you like to make an appointment? The user says a no, the appointment no intent will be triggered. The intent response would be goodbye. Now there is something here written like input context and output context. And we'll be dealing with this a bit later on that what are input context, what are output context, how are these triggered? And this is really very interesting. We'll be coming on in the next lectures. Also, we need to discuss one more thing that we left off in the last session and it was a bit about suggestion chips and when we were defining suggestion chips we said that each suggestion chip or each list item that you tap on or each carousel card that you tap on will turn into a user query 
Now let's take the example of suggestion chip first. What actually is happening out there? When you are clicking this suggestion chip, when you are clicking this button kind of a thing, it turns into a user query. And now this user query is matched to the training phrases. As it is matched to the right training phrases, it catches up the right intent and the answer of the intent is shown to the user. And this is how you can connect various intent one by one using various suggestion chips. You can use suggestion chips and then user gets a sense of feeling. I can click on this and I can go to another answer and I can click on this and I can go to more, more answers. And that is how it works. That is how the flow continues. Now it's time for your next assignment. So what you need to do is you need to go to dialogflow.com and create at least 15 intents according to your use case. Next what you need to do is you need to add around 8 to 12 training phrases in each of these intents. If it is a follow up intent that's fine but apart from that you need to add around 8 to 12 training phrases in each intent and then you need to define the answers of each intent according to your use case. You have already built the flows, you just need to put in those answers out there now. Now interconnection could be done via user of cards, via using suggestion chips and while you are configuring each intent, you need to keep testing it regularly. And you can see on the right hand side, there is a try it now column in Dialogflow where you can regularly test your intents. Make sure you are making your answers in Google Assistant response part of the responses. This is your next assignment, looking forward and hoping to see you complete this as soon as possible and ready with the chatbots very soon. In the next lecture, we'll be covering up entities and that is the magic of dialogue. One good conversation can shift the direction of change forever. Thanks a lot.